Hello and welcome to the Jam Pad. I'm Raman Banot and this is a show with a difference, a bit of music, a whole lot of conversation and we get to see the other side of the special guest joining in on the show which is Trupti Murgundik. Warm welcome to you Trupti. Great to have you on the show. Hi Raman. Really happy to be here. And congratulations. First and foremost, the show's got to start with that huge achievement. first badminton player to get the dhyan chand award what a what an achievement many congratulations thank you thank you so much it feels really uh, great and honored at the same time uh, when you have such a long career and at the end you know you have been appreciated you've been recognized i think it really feels nice super stuff you've been you've been an achiever all through your playing days yeah national champion played the singles played the doubles the you know the south asian games dominated there commonwealth games represented india had a medal but that's those are achievements in the badminton field of course the latest one being the award that you've got uh, but if one were to talk about life outside the court that's what this show is all about so we need to get to know more about the interest that trupti has I mean uh, uh, even during my playing days and all that you know I I have a lot of interest honestly speaking of course badminton being the passion uh, it just happened to me and I pursued it and I'm happy that I excelled uh, uh, up to this level at least so I have no regrets uh, with that aspect but there are a few things which I always wanted to do uh, uh, you know so I think uh, now is the time probably uh, that I could little bit indulge in those uh, things uh one of them being uh fashion designing i thought you know if i was not a good sports person as such mm. i would probably get into that line so probably uh, i i hope that today i would have been some one of the successful <laughs> fashion designer so I, uh, little, I, yeah i remember correctly sorry i'm interrupting you here trupti but i'm interrupting you but i still remember seeing one of your posts a few i think it was a few months ago you would actually walk the ramp yeah <laughs> it just happened of course walking the ramp was not my thing not mm-hmm. my uh, uh, you know cup of tea as much um, but yes i did that and uh, it was a very good experience i just loved it i think um, yeah as i said you know i loved uh, designing clothes and all uh, yeah, as a hobby i still do or rather i was doing uh, even during my playing career you know when uh, when you needed a break from your sport or when you you know you just need some time off and then you want to get back i would indulge it into that and my mind would be completely into that and forget all the worries whatever fatigue i had uh, i would just forget everything after that so were you were like you were like a natural you never really uh, did a course or anything in fashion designing you just kind of were a natural or you looked at magazines and said i like this kind of design i like this kind of look no yeah i think you can say pretty much that way because i i wanted to do a course but uh, again you know in the playing days it was really tough to uh, you know indulge in any of these courses uh, you need it you need that good time and i i personally feel that uh, you know fashion designing or any of these um, uh, creatives you know is especially the arts uh, side you got to be creative within yourself i think that is more important yes uh, you know getting that degree uh, uh, adds a little extra thing to it but i think you if you're creative in your head i think you can just do uh, anything Oh, and a little birdie told me that uh, you know the time that you, the few months ago, about a year ago, when you walked the ramp, that wasn't the first time that you had actually walked the ramp. You'd have you'd actually been on the ramp before as well. Tell us about that. I yeah, I mean I walked uh, the ramp. Uh, uh, it just happened um, during my playing days. I I was suddenly I got a call from a designer out of the blue, and um, I walked. I had to walk as a showstopper. Wow. and i was very reluctant initially uh, you know uh, where, is it for me sure are you sure you know so uh, but i think my husband was very supportive he said just go ahead and try it what's the harm you know it's it's Stop. it's something uh, uh, you can do now so i went and tried so i i really enjoyed but the one which i did very recently um, i had all the professional models walking along with me and the way they walked and everything and and for that matter the ramp was really long You know, I. Uh, is this I think going to they, end? They, when you're walking down. You is, think, this is, going, is this going? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the outfit, uh, outfit. I what I had to wear was also pretty interesting. You know, I had a a neck piece. Uh, if you've seen that picture, uh, which kept on moving. You know, as I was walking. So being, uh, I mean, not coming from a being a professional model and then walking with all these things and then. you know you actually have to show that you know how to walk 
<laughs> so I'm I was sure just dressing pretending. Dressing must have been very interesting. I'm sure the rehearsals. No, unfortunately, must have been- no. Unfortunately, I didn't have time for the rehearsals oh. because I was very tied up, and I just reached uh, a few hours before the show. and i was just told okay you have to walk here after that you have to go here there you know on the stage you have to do uh, one or two performances sort of a thing and i was just done and the uh, you know the professional models uh, who were around and they were so pro you know looking at them i felt oh, what am i <laughs> you know <laughs> but they were very nice they were very supportive and uh, uh, they just gave me one or two tips you know well, you just don't bother because anyways the lights were falling so much on my eyes Yeah. that i i couldn't see any audience so it didn't matter for me it was as good as nobody sitting around you know? the best so, thing no can you take yeah the... so yeah so i think that was good so it didn't matter and i i think i uh, i probably did it uh, you know uh, some genuine uh, walk and I, oh. I was happy i was happy at the end of it yeah no, i saw the pictures they were probably absolutely amazing i was amazing, i was so, so sure. tensed i was so tensed uh, uh, probably in my match i would have never got that much tensed also <laughs> 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 Generally, your opponents would get tense. You no, know, they're playing you. Oh no, I don't know to face up against us. So they, you, you pass the tension on to them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I also want to ask you this because um, I am yet to meet a, a you know a player on the circuit who's not fond of music. You know, in different yeah. ways. Um, there could be different genres, different things that they listen to. But music's been one universal language that I've spoken. You know, to every player, and found out that this is a language that everyone speaks. So, what was it like with you? Were you interested in music even as a child? Yeah, I mean, I agree with you totally. You know that I don't think any of the sports person, even I've come across, will not have these fancy headphones. What you are also putting it on something similar to that, and would indulge or invest into uh, you know those good headphones because music was something I call it as a therapy. Honestly, music, um, mm. you know, because. um uh, there are times for a sports person or or i think for any any human being as such uh, i think it really helps when you are very hyper you want to calm down you have you have so many genres in the music so it helps you uh, quite a lot so I, i always call it as a therapy and uh, and my uh, sort of music was it varied a lot it varied okay. depending on what mood i am on that particular time i used to have some specific songs uh just before i would uh, go for a match you know um from mo- most of the times you know the journey from the hotel to the stadium so uh the, i used to have a set of uh, songs which i would listen to i would like i i love peppy songs then and uh, you know it would just charge me up you know uh, mentally you can Get say you and group. yeah and i had different genre of songs in that itself you know so it could be even hindi song at the same time there would be a english and there could be a, uh, some ganpati song also wow. so you could yeah with all that dhol tashas yeah, if yeah, you so uh, are aware of yeah you up, no? yeah yeah so i should love that music and uh, i used to have set of songs uh, uh, which i would listen before entering the not entering the court as much but entering the stadium at least yeah and and uh, ever fancied playing an instrument or, or picking up an instrument when you were uh, when you were uh, not fully into badminton initially as a kid uh yes i did love you know that uh, i always wanted to learn keyboard and uh, again the same reason that i didn't find enough time i think uh, I, i think i should not be giving this uh, as an excuse uh, but Yeah, I think I any um, you know in future any uh, uh, point of time I will definitely uh, try try to pursue that. Uh, but yes, I definitely like because I felt um, you know playing the keyboard was pretty soothing, and uh, uh, there were some numbers which would really sound good on that. So yeah, so that's about it. But never really tried anything. I have to share a little story with you. I could never. I mean, I could play the guitar. I didn't know how to play the keyboard or you know any other instrument. but okay. um, just about 10 months ago uh, almost 11 months now uh, our school uh, uh, our cl- we had a class uh, school reunion and we decided to get our school band together and i used to play with the guys there and we had different uh, uh, you know bands in school as well we had three bands in colombo so depended on who was av- available when they went to a particular competition so when we all got together for the reunion we realized there's six of us who are guitarists And wow. there was nobody who could play the keyboard in our batch. So okay. I said, "Hang on, let me try and learn at least the basics of how a key- how to play a keyboard, so we can actually jam and play together on the reunion." So I spent two, two and a half months trying to learn how to play the keyboards, and and we played together. So the story is, I actually did master enough to be able to play together. So nice, I'm nice. sure it can happen That's to you lovely. as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, I will try. I will try. As I said, you know, I was interested in a lot of things. I think the time is too short. I feel sometimes, you know, twenty-four hours in a day is way too short. So um, I will. I will. Yes, yes. I. I mean, I always uh, had planned that once I retire from my sport, uh, I'm going to take off for one year totally, and then just pursue all happen? the things which I. Did that happen? No, you said you take time off. Unfortunately, not yet. I'm still waiting for that year. <laughs> I'm still waiting. I just kept getting, uh, you know, tied up with one after the other things. Uh, it's nice. I I don't have regret, but yes, I just want to feel that when you do nothing, you know, just just by yourself. Right. That time, how how you going to whether I'm I don't know whether I'm going to get lost, you know, uh, that I don't have anything to do or what. Uh, I don't know how that feeling is going to be when I take that break when the, when I get that uh, opportunity to take an off. But I'm I'm keeping that uh, as something to look forward to. <laughs> well, you've you've uh, you know uh, played multiple roles. You've had uh, multiple hats that you've worn uh, in a in a very short span of time. Uh, you know. an exceptional player yourself um, then got into um, broadcasting as well i remember doing uh, stints during the uh, uh, the continental asian games, games. Yeah. we do uh, i think yeah. it was the asian games and we we did the asian. broadcast together uh, yeah. we've had um, you play uh, you know you played the role of a, a coach uh, a selector as well what's the one thing that you've uh, enjoyed the most how oh, pretty tough uh, uh, coming as a rather becoming as an expert commentator it just happened to me again and i never thought because i used to be really a camera shy person in my uh, younger days and even during my playing career so i i used to really avoid uh, any of the interviews i used to literally give excuses i don't i never used to give speeches or anything if i was invited as a chief guest i used to say my throat is bad and uh, you know just get away with those kind of excuses but um i i remember my first interview uh was when i was 10 years old i became the state champion and all india radio had invited me and there was another table tennis guy from uh, my state uh, we both were in, invited for the interview and we struggled and struggled it was a recording not even a live interview we had both of us had, had our mums together and we were just not able to open our mouth and uh, finally uh, you know the one who was going to interview sort of gave up and then you know the mums and all they actually literally wrote the answers and we we thought we'll just read out you know it was it was that bad and uh, somehow we managed to do that so that is how so uh, you know going back and thinking of uh, that day and now what i am doing you know going on uh, as expert commentator and commentator in lot of leading channels and for uh, you know all the important events right from olympics commonwealth games asian games uh I don't know what to say. <laughs> it yeah, really amuses journey, myself. It it really amuses myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I I enjoy that now. Now definitely, uh, uh, I got into the groove and I really enjoy that. So that is one thing. Coaching, of course, um, it's it's a pretty tough job. Uh, it's it looks very easy from outside. You know, you may be a good player. You when in your playing uh, when you're actively playing, but not necessarily you can be a good coach. so you need a different uh, uh, set of things to be a coach you uh, there is a lot of uh, understanding lot of patience is required because uh, when you are playing you're just uh, you know you're you're sort of a selfish you know you you just see things uh, for Not yourself around you yeah yeah my per- uh, per- perspective or the uh, individual perspective you know right but whereas coach it's not the way you know you you also tend to become like a parent to an extent mm-hmm. because it's not only on the court what you uh, got to see what your player does but it also matters what he is eaten he or she has eaten or uh, slept on time and xyz things you know which are e- even off court so it's a it's a big responsibility um and i'm i'm happy my first uh, tournament was with the juniors so even younger uh, kids to manage in a in a different the teenagers you know so you right. can understand how it goes Must so it was good so uh, yeah good experience also and i think these experience only help you to uh, excel better and uh, better so this was uh, with respect to coaching and then select up yes uh, again a different role and uh, uh, i've been also a mentor at the jito foundation where um, we have five sports and uh, we are uh, trying to nack uh, you know the junior talent uh, in each uh, sport and the vision is again the olympics so mentor them thoroughly uh, to achieve their goal so um, a lot of things um, i've been getting and i'm also working with indian oil uh, corporation so uh, yeah juggling so multiple I, things together at one point of time yes 
Yes, so it's been nearly uh, 17 years for me with Indian Oil Corporation, and I've been very glad uh, to be with them. Uh, they've supported me um, uh, thoroughly throughout my active uh, sporting career as well as post uh, retirement. I think most of uh, the credit goes to them also that because um, you know post retirement you become as a regular employee. and uh, so you know your entire day is at your work but in spite of that they did you know uh, allow me when as and when i uh, needed these kind of um, uh, uh, break or i had to go for these assignments so uh, i think uh, they have also have been very supportive in that matter and then yes the part comes is the motherhood <laughs> i course, think the most a- interesting yeah the most interesting the most challenging i think everything all the adjectives nouns everything comes into that <laughs> <laughs> and it changed yeah. your mindset and the way you approached uh, approach life after that yes it does it does because you have a lot of responsibility after that you know in the earlier days you could just take your bag and walk out but it's not the case anymore now you know you have to uh, plan things you have to organize things uh even if you are away you still have to be connected with them and uh, just to make sure you know that things are all good Absolutely. so i think i think it it's it, it's part of everyone's life i think uh, you know and it is nice you have to enjoy every moment I, I, you know you you mentioned this story about uh, this part about uh, you know being very uh, shy on tv in terms of giving interviews and and you told me that story. Raman I'm going to interrupt you I also had another role especially during the lockdown a role okay. of a bai <laughs> 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 so, I think I think almost everyone <laughs> took that role up, yeah. Oh, being the last cleaner in the works. <laughs> yeah, I think I was just tested left, right with my uh, uh, house skills and cooking skills and everything. I, I mean, oh. so that was a new role for nearly six months. I still don't have help coming at home. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's how it is. So, so I think so yeah, flying like, colors. Uh, uh, that's what we'd say. You came out with uh, in 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 the in the kitchen duties. Yeah, I think I, this question should be asked to my family. I think. Yeah, I think I, <laughs> I think I need to speak to your husband and figure out from him. You know what? Yeah, I, I think. Pa- I'm pathetic in the kitchen. Pathetic, you know. So uh, <laughs> I'm actually told stay away and mark what you cook. If at all you make something, I'm great with making breakfast and sandwiches <laughs> and the works and you know pizzas and the works. I, I, I'm actually pretty good. My kids vouch for it, but. So you know, for me, my husband is foodie. My family is pretty food, uh, for that matter. and uh, we're very used to uh, eating out uh, you know uh, it's something like you know uh, uh, today is a mood for chinese so just head out to so and so restaurant today is continental just head out yeah. so probably and it was like like you know lockdown no restaurants you can't afford to order you know it's it, it was all very risky everything but i think i made sure that they got their all the cuisines and uh, tried everything on that super stuff so, and, brilliant So I, I I asked them once, you know, did you all miss the restaurants or anything? And they said no. And so I think that was a that yeah, was so a then compliment. Then hats off to you, yeah. Hats <laughs> off to you. Super stuff. Super super stuff. Yes, and cleaning and mopping and everything. Okay, so that <laughs> that counts yeah. a lot. I'm sure. I'm sure there are these are things everybody did in the lockdown in six months. They were they were. Yeah. I, you know, uh, we just had Teachers Day go by, and I put out a post on on my social media handles saying that. uh the the unfortunate part of this uh, pandemic apart covid-19 has been the best teacher of 2020 because it's actually made human <laughs> beings adapt to different things that they never did before so it's taught us new things yes. here yes the, i mean I, i used to wonder like how uh, everyone was saying it's so boring to sit at home during the lockdown and i was like i'm not getting 5 <laughs> minutes also to myself you know all these things just kept me <laughs> occupied but one good thing was that uh the negativity the anxiety what was happening because of the uh, situation around that did get into me Great. because of, i was all the time i was keeping myself occupied so i think uh, you know we should learn something uh, through this also yeah 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 i think yeah, that, that's again a scenario that this these times have taught us these these times have taught, taught us interesting us, yes. things but i'll go back to taught that us. point i was making you know you talked yeah. about being yeah. uh, uh, not not so keen on giving interviews I'll remind you of a time. I don't think you'd remember this. Uh, 2006 was when you had the Melbourne Commonwealth Games. 
and yeah. just before the indian team the contingent badminton contingent went for the 2006 melbourne games uh, there was a camp that was held in delhi if you would remember i'm just trying to toggle your memory for it okay okay has it come back to you no uh, no 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 uh, no 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 see we had a camp actually uh, in indonesia then Before, uh, you left the, for Indonesia, but before leaving for yeah, Indonesia, everyone gathered. Yeah, before that, yeah, for a few days. Yeah. For a few days, yeah. and you had these tryouts yeah. at what was there, the Siri Fort uh, complex. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. before you left for Indonesia for the camp, and that's when you, from there, you went to uh, Melbourne to play the games. Yes, yes. I had come there to interview all the players. I'm talking about this 2006. Okay, okay before. So I I uh, I still have footage. Somebody actually shared that footage with me. So I have Aparna's wow. interview. Okay. I have Jawala's interview. I have the yeah. interview with a very very young uh, Saina Nehwal because that was her yeah. first Commonwealth Games that she had gone yes. for. She was really young. Yeah. So I have all these yeah. interviews with me. Guess the one interview that I don't have. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably would have ran away from you then also. <laughs> so I don't know what the story was, but we never found you at that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, interestingly, uh, as you said, you know that was Saina's first tournament. So yeah. me and Saina, uh, for the first time, we played uh, doubles in the Commonwealth Games, Super. and we did uh, really well. We actually lost the medal match. You know um, that that year, uh, normally the semi-finalist is like the bronze is assured. But hmm. uh, that year they had uh, decided a new rule where they'll have a playoff. Yeah, and we lost that match. And uh, uh, for that match, you know, we had Sunil Gavaskar, we had Prakash Padukone, we had Vijay Amritraj coming wow. to watch our match. And predominantly, we've been singles uh, player players, both of us. We right. we did play doubles. I've been a national champion in doubles as well. But once you reach a stage, you have to choose a event. So um, nobody was really expecting us to do so well in the doubles, and it was a bit of a surprise to everyone. So that was a nice feeling when you have all these stalwarts coming and watching your match. Yeah, yeah. of course. And it just reminded. It was. It was the first medal for Saina at the Commonwealth Games. Uh, the team yes. event, I think, is where uh, uh, there was a bronze. Yeah. I think that the team had got. Yes. So. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going back to badminton there, yeah. now on the show. Great memories, <laughs> though. Great memories, but we're just drifting back yeah. to baddy. So, so, so yeah. let's drift away from that. I've got a rapid five for you. Okay, My five God. questions. Do I do I get a goodie bag for that? Ah. Uh, okay, a guitar <laughs> no, no, lesson. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some uh, some incentives, you know, to uh, look forward to. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. The fan yeah. fan uh, adulation. Let's put it that way. The fan okay. adulation is okay. what you're going to get for this. Okay, so fun done, five done. stuff that yeah. people don't know about Trupti is what we want to know on this show. Mm, uh, college days, uh, I'm sure you were busy training. You were busy playing at that time. You were very active on the on the national circuit as well, going for the international tournaments later. So. You know, generally you play pranks in college, and you've got this bunch of friends. You do fun stuff, musty in the works. But for you at the academy, I'm sure you must have been the perpetrator, not the recipient on the, on the receiving end of the pranks. So tell me, what's the funniest prank that you've ever played? Don't don't you see on my face that innocence? Hey, I can see the naughtiness also. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I know. <laughs> yes. Uh yeah as you said uh, I will have to little bit accept that I was a bit naughty when in my childhood days uh, you know I was always on the streets uh, playing uh, okay. all the all the street games literally from gilly danda to uh, marbles and uh, I played everything and I used to love playing that okay. I I think I was I was more like a tomboy and um, I did have uh, some of my girlfriends, and uh, they would all love to sit and play those house, house, kitchen game, and all that thing. But I was out uh, with all the boys playing all these sort of games. So uh, yeah, um, and as you said, you know, academy uh, days were really good fun. Um, we all lived like a family. I was I was hardly 14 years old when I moved to uh, Bangalore to join the Prakash Vadukone Academy, and uh, was almost by myself uh, most of it, and. So we used to have these two flats, uh, uh, one for the boys, one for the uh, uh, you know the girls. Yeah. And we had a male cook, so the cook used to stay in the boys' flat, and we had to go and eat all our meals there. 
Okay. And uh, one of one of our uh, players, you know, uh, uh, he was traveling a lot abroad, and he had got one of his scary mask. And oh, like like I was, know what you act- did last summer, kind of ghost masks and all, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and and that mask actually, you know, really looked quite real. Also, you know, the uh, uh, the quality or the uh, whatever the design was very uh, very sharp. And he he had got the, uh, that, and so um, he had started scaring everybody. You know, whoever uh, we used to literally scare the watchman, wear white bed sheets, um, you know, fully on it, and then put the mask because it used to be dark in the night and just simply run and wow. do all these kind of uh, uh, things. Thanks. So uh, yeah, on and off uh, these things were going on. So there was one day um, he decided that uh, you know whoever rings the bell and comes, um, he's going to just put on the mask and stand in front of them as you open the door. Yeah, so, so scare the living it, uh, daylights out of that person. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is basically at times it's like a reaction. You know, when you open somebody rings the bell, you open the door and you suddenly see a scary face. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he did it with one of the player, and um, then I was the second one to enter. Yeah, I did react to it. I would not say that I didn't get scared and all, but uh, I definitely reacted to it. Uh, then we had some grocery guys coming and dropping some. So that that guy was literally uh, petrified and literally he had to go and hug him and you know calm him. Like you know he really got worried. Oh, he just dropped the groceries and ran off, and he didn't have to pay for it also. Yeah, he, his face was like, oh my god, you know, like he he could, he was just refusing to smile. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, so this is what was going on. And then slowly everybody gathered, and then the food was ready. And uh, cook, uh, you know, we used to call him Bhai Sab, and Bhai Sab said, "Ki khana lag gaya hai." So we were just waiting for food, and we all sat on the uh, dining table. We were all eating together, and in the middle of the, uh, you know, that suddenly a bell rang again, and we were like in two minds: whether do we go open and try this thing again, hmm. or just just let it go. Okay. Uh, I think uh, because we were all eating, our hands were also, uh, you know, okay. uh, with food and everything. So we said, just let it go. And uh, I was the one who went and opened the door. And uh, <laughs> to my surprise, it was Prakash sir. Who saw. Did you have the mask <laughs> on? <laughs> No, I didn't have. I, I just, and I couldn't. You know, I couldn't control my laughter. Just thinking of, I mean, with that thought that if, uh, you know, one of us were wearing mask and trying to scare on him, was and it was going to be him because we were not expecting him. He would just come, uh, you know, at times as a surprise visit, and uh, and I, I was just holding myself so badly in front. I didn't allow him for a second, you know, to enter, or because I was totally lost with <laughs> thinking, you know, someone like him is standing. And then he enters, and then you know everybody is giggling near in, in the table, putting their head down and giggling, and not trying to show that actually. <laughs> yeah, so they were and thinking, went, what would have happened? Went, what would have happened yeah. if you actually had the mask on? <laughs> I know, I I know, I mean, it's, it's fun to tell now, but that time the situation was pretty different. And then um, you know, so uh, that that is how it was, and I, so I was like. Um, What's happening? Why is it something funny? What is it? Was there a joke or something? You know, like then somehow you know we didn't want to let out about that mask because of you know we've got some. You, know, you don't know how he's going to take it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. So we, we definitely we told him a little later where he, he. So it was something like that. You know. So we did. There were a lot of things we used to have a fart pillow. Just okay. keep it under somebody's chair and uh, the control would be in our hands. Let him sit so, on it. Yeah. Yeah, so these were all very light things which we could carry in our kit bag even while traveling. So you know, oh. on and on we used to uh, do that. Yeah. Talk about traveling. Let me ask you this one. Uh, you know, uh, like a like a pro player who's been on the circuit for a long time. I'm sure you've had to travel a fair bit. Uh, fun memories of of a travel trip or something that happened to you while you were traveling in India or abroad. Oh, uh, quite a few, quite a few. Because uh, yes, we travelled a lot, hmm. and uh, a lot of the uh, things, you know. Um, one of the things, probably, I would say, um, was uh, we were about to leave for World Championships, and that time we had a camp in Hyderabad. And okay. uh, most of the uh, times, you know, our tickets and visa and everything would, uh, you know, come reach to us at a very last minute. So we would always be, um, you know, we would know the day probably uh, the day which we are going to leave. So we would keep our bags uh, mostly packed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we wouldn't know what time our flight would be to where, how, what is the route or whatever. It it would take, uh, you know, it was uh, mostly at the last minute. Okay. So. Um, 
yeah and uh, something similar happened uh, so we were in hyderabad all of us the indian team and we were to fly to uh, i think spain uh, okay. for world championships and okay. then the flight tickets arrived around the noon time and uh, the passports everything and we had to fly from hyderabad to bombay and then we had a connecting flight to uh, spain from bombay all right so um, uh, it just happened that uh, you know uh, someone just uh, mis- uh, mistakenly read it as um, for 1500 hours as 5 o'clock so oh, it's, it's, a, it's a very common mistake you don't see the with the, yeah. the moment you see 15 you kind of somehow register 5 as the time you don't look yeah, at so, it as 1700 uh, so it hours it was yeah. it was around lunch time we were all eating lunch and we came to know that about 5 o'clock is our flight um so we were like we were like okay you know things are almost ready it's just the last minute uh, last bit of packing and we hmm. we are off Okay. So we had enough time. We had good time to reach the airport. Airport is pretty far, but still we had good time for a five o'clock flight, you know. Right. And then suddenly around one o'clock or something, when somebody actually went through the uh, tickets, you know, uh, with the proper this thing, and realized that it is fifteen hundred hours, which means the three p pm flight. And oh my god! And the call came. <laughs> and we restarted whatever uh, way we were quickly you know packed the last minute packing and just uh, uh, try to leave uh, you know we had some of the local players who were staying in their uh, houses in different areas of hyderabad and everybody was informed they said just leave and reach the airport in whatever possible uh, way you know as fast as uh, you can and whoever goes there you know will you know at least go and convince the airline you know just hold on and you know the rest of the indian team so somebody had to reach there uh, first okay. so th- that is how it was uh, we tried and unfortunately that day it started raining which was again um, not expected that day it was pouring suddenly oh. so there was a lot of traffic jam so uh, most of them were unable to reach on time and few of them reached uh, in advance and they were uh-huh. trying to you know convince somehow to the airline that we really need to get onto this flight so we have a, I, there's I, no I, way i'm sure from hyderabad you wouldn't have had a direct flight to spain you would have probably got to go to one of the centers either delhi or mumbai to take the flight yeah. to spain yeah so um, mostly we always as indian team we always have to uh, you know try to get onto the air india flight because okay. that being our national carrier so that's the first choice and if you don't have that uh i mean if the airline doesn't have a flight uh, traveling to your destination or xyz reasons then you uh, you then know you generally move to another airline yeah okay. so uh, so those restrictions also uh, were there then so we had to badly get on to this flight and uh, so somehow few of us managed to reach the chief coach also was there and we fan- uh, managed to reach um, i remember um, uh, saina and couple of others you know uh, were unable to reach in time wow and uh, the flight was delayed for a while okay and uh, yes and you were probably so, the last people to board because the flight so was, was delayed it was delayed for a while so <laughs> I, mean, i got it <laughs> so yeah technical issues and then, uh, <laughs> so we got into the flight and we were like um, you know putting our heads down literally and trying to when we our seats were not together we were all spread out because they were the last seats so uh, like my seat was in between two of them And, and you must have uh, got DGs. Walk. What do we call them? DGs, dirty glares from all the other passengers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all not only glares but the comments also. You know, so as we entered, they're like, "Are VIP आने वाले थे तो बोलना था ना कि technical issue है क्या? Oh my God, that was the most. You know, we were just waiting कि Bombay कब आएगा बस. You know, put your head down. One and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> even no, i remember you know yeah i, I remember the a hostess came with like what juice do you were like, serving food and like um i asked for some juice and then she said this is not i said okay just give whatever you have you know so we were just not <laughs> i don't want to talk too much they don't no, yeah no no arguing or nothing you know so just so yeah so these were uh, uh, a few things yeah a uh, good fun a yeah. uh, good fun i'm sure the passengers would be saying ah uh, okay <laughs> <laughs> no and we ha- we also had another task after that that to reach bombay uh, because few as i said you know uh, three to four of them had uh, were unable to get on to this flight so huh. we had to make sure that the next flight was uh, you also know is also <laughs> technical <laughs> reasons <laughs> technical no but uh, fortunately uh, we all made it in time and we didn't have to do anything of that oh, sort so great so great how, that must so, have been stressful so many yeah. times Yeah, it is stressful, you know. So many. So what I want to say is, many times, you know, we see uh, so and so won the tournament, you know, uh, mm. this that, but um, or did a good performance at a particular tournament or event. 
but they don't really know what all goes behind uh, that you know so to reach up to uh, uh, that so uh, there've been uh, a lot of such instances in fact it's very hard to pick stories. one of them. untold stories yes so in fact some of them said why would you write a book you know <laughs> i said okay okay I, that's another role which i'll another hack another hack to don another hack, another hack. Uh, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I said before I forget all the things I should I should pen it down. Yeah. No, actually I think that's that's a brilliant thought. That's a brilliant thought. But talking about stress, this I mean this is one way of getting stress. The other way is of course of course you play when you're playing that stress life throws up its fair share of uh, you know stress at everyone. But what's your stress buster? What's what does Trupti do to bust stress, get away from it all? Ah, uh, that time I just don't think of the sport at all. You know, badminton um, is just not uh, there in my mind that time. Uh, the only uh, reason is that, as you said, you know, you have to just come. There is there. Every player has that fatigue moment. You know, when you are playing way too long, or uh, you know, training, whatever. Eh, there could be any other reason. Sometimes because of the injuries also. Mm. So I think for me, uh, it used to be shopping. So Ooh. I. I Yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh you know generally generally it's considered shopping as in okay, you know you're not serious enough, uh, you're not concentrating, but shopping really used to help me. It was something like uh you know sort of a rejuvenation for me uh going to the mall uh, for shopping. I used to say that I will go and just do window shopping and come. You know, uh because um somewhere in my head as i said you know fashion designing it it came very naturally to me right. uh if i see some color okay this color will match with another color or this style will go so automatically your brains are you know thinking of something else apart from what you really want not to think at that point of time right. so uh that is how you, it used to be okay so with this outfit i need another shoes you know so it would start with one thing and then the entire uh set of things would go along with that wow. so that even if i would walk for one hour two hours uh, or something uh it would just refresh me and then of course i would end up buying it would it never happened that i have uh, window <laughs> shopping window for shop. tiny, eh? so yeah it it'll just it will just not happen uh, for women i'm sure oh. so i would and so that that whatever new thing i would have bought also would actually make me feel happy and i was very fond of watches so uh, okay. there was a point yeah i'm still fond of watches um, yeah Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh when I used to win my tournaments when I was young, uh, yeah. whatever prize money I would just go and buy a watch. Wow. So uh, I had I had a so You have quite collection. a collection because you won quite a few so I'm yeah. sure you have a quite a collection. <laughs> no, no, not always. I was not allowed to buy all the time. Uh <laughs> but yeah, I mean I had certain so I people actually knew me the knew about me that how fond of uh, I'm uh, about watches and everybody would re- actually ask me about my watches. You know whenever I had a new watch and I would wow. wear it on a so in a particular <laughs> tournament. Yeah. yeah. So uh that was something uh, I would enjoy that. So I I've think got a side yeah. question. I've got a side question on the shopping piece only. Post marriage, how many times <laughs> did your husband accompany you for shopping, and and you know what is his take on it? Not much. He said you just go by yourself and do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Because as I said, no, it would start with one small thing, and then yeah. you know I need everything which will oh. go along with that. <laughs> so he says, I'll steer just, clear. Just, until then, you know my mind is not satisfied. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so it would be more of like I shop for him. So he would, that would be much easier. <laughs> so he's happy. You know, it's a win-win. Huh? It's a win-win for him. He gets something. Yeah. So it. Yeah. So it's. It was not uh, for me that I shop only for myself. But okay. Uh, I actually used to end up buying things for uh, rest of them for my family members. You know, if I see something and I would say, okay, this goes uh, good for my brother. This goes good for my sister or my mom. Super. And I would just pick it up. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how it used to be. So yeah. in all the things that you know you bought or all the things that you've done or all the incidents that ha- that have happened to you in life what is the one unforgettable moment for you If I were to ask you an unforgettable uh, moment incident what will it be Um not a fun one I mean of course there are a few but uh, this matters uh, a lot to me uh, okay. it was during um i think i'm not able to recollect uh, which year it was hmm. but um, i was i was um, doing very well you know i was at my peak and i was uh, playing very well i was i, was, I myself was feeling good okay. and um, i'm i'm such a player that i was known rather my image as a player was known for uh, my skills 
mm-hmm. my on court intelligence and uh, people would literally uh, love to come and watch uh, me play uh, i w- i had a very deceptive uh, yeah, i was game. just about to say and, that i was just about to say yeah. that, you know the deceptive style of play that you had yeah so uh, so that is how i was known in this uh, badminton circuit as much and uh, uh, i returned from an international event i did win some international tournaments and i came, i come back to the academy okay. and uh, practiced uh, you know our regular practice sessions were going on mm-hmm. and i was playing and uh, prakasha was around that time i was fortunate that you know prakasha was still coming uh, to the courts and playing and uh, i mean i had an opportunity to actually uh, play with him wow. and so So yeah so I was we were doing our regular drills on the court and he was just about to leave in fact and he just comes behind my court and uh, sits so uh, I finished we used to have these uh, drills with the time so I finished one of the drill and I just came out and he's like you know you are playing so good you are in such a fabulous rhythm you know the uh, we have these tosses which we call you know from one end to the other end uh, what you uh, one of the stroke it is called in badminton mm. and um uh, my half smash he said everything is just going absolutely perfect you know the accuracy and everything is going so perfect mm-hmm. that i was about to leave and you held me back and that's why i sat and i just couldn't take the eyes off uh, on what you were playing wow. and uh, it, it just <laughs> i just melted <laughs> oh, i'm sure coming so from I him it meant a whole lot Yeah I mean uh, exactly you know Prakash is at times not very vocal or whatever you know he's a very calm uh, person as such right. and something like this coming from him is it's really uh, you know uh, very touchy very touchy and yeah so wow. I think this this is the time uh, when I cannot uh, forget there are certain things used to send me mails when I was in an international tournament I still have those mails uh, wow. with me you know it was very i mean that time it was only hardly yahoo and hotmail that's about it not Correct. so much of social media and all that so the only way of communication was uh, through mails if you're traveling abroad right. and uh, i have some good mails the way here so there's there yeah, these are some, some things which are not uh, forgettable at all wow okay uh, the last question on this fun five okay which is um, <laughs> um something that that people will not know about you and that's why we'd like you to talk about it what or who has ended up uh, having the greatest influence in your life or shaping your your thoughts or your or your uh, approach to life uh well i mean to start off to begin with my mom because okay. uh, my mom has been a sports person and uh, uh, in my family uh, we don't have any sports person as such i have an elder sister elder sister and then an elder brother Okay. uh but no nobody has been very fascinated towards these sports and uh, i remember uh, when i started i as i said you know i used to play a lot of uh, games on the streets and uh, we lived in a colony and right. so we had uh, you know not much of traffic and all that so we could easily play uh, on the street and uh, we used to play badminton outdoor badminton and whoever misses the shuttle will be out the next person gets in correct and i didn't have a that's it <laughs> yeah yeah and i didn't have a racket of my own then and my brother and sister they had a racket and they refused to give me and you know they you know as usual they had to bully me and yeah. so uh they used to literally uh, we used to have a nail on the wall and where they used to hang it so they had you know uh, you know nailed one really high where i couldn't reach i was very small oh. that time <laughs> and uh, you know so this is how it the things were and when when they would go out my mom would remove it and give it to me and he would say okay go play but bring it back before they come <laughs> you know <so. laughs> lest world war 3 breaks out in the house <laughs> yeah so this is how uh, the fun things were but and now today they have to ask me for a racket <laughs> <laughs> there you go life's come Time up full change. circle <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so uh so this is what uh, it was so my mom uh, then one of the summer vacation made me join um, uh you know uh, the badminton camps the, the summer camps what you have it was very right. close to my house uh, yeah. but then when we went there uh, for admission they said there's no place because it was only one badminton court so very limited uh, numbers they were taking okay. uh, they said ki hockey is there why don't she do- join hockey and whenever there's a time uh, we will call her back okay so my mom said ha okay i also said because something some sport for two months you know so we you had played hockey you played hockey so i started off with i started off uh, like you say a uh, proper coaching from a coach with hockey 
Wow. And I I didn't play much but I played for about 2 months did learn some dribbling in hockey and all that. Oh wow. So how to drag and uh, uh then they called me saying that there's one place in badminton and why don't you uh, join if you're interested. Mm. So I joined badminton and that's when it started uh, for me and I was fortunate that my first coach Mr. Vasan Gore um he's no more in fact he we lost him during the uh, lockdown. Oh. and um uh, he was a fabulous coach you know the basics what i learned from him made me last this long in badminton oh. so um not knowing about his any credentials uh, <clears throat> he was a selfless uh, coach mm-hmm. and uh, so yeah so my journey started there i was just 9 um and i uh, you know picked up uh, in a very short time then he said why don't you participate in a tournament so i participated a couple of tournaments i lost in like first or second round okay uh, but eventually i started doing well and by 10 i was um, already a state champion so uh, the journey began with that with respect to playing tournaments right. but there was a point uh, when i was um, say about uh, 11 11 and a half years old i had to play we used to have under 12 as a category then it okay. was called as midget categories you know in the juniors you have these categories mm. so i had to head out of pune to uh, go and uh, play the state tournaments because i was the potential uh, state champion even then mm. uh, but my grandparents came from a little orthodox uh, thinking oh. and uh, where me and my mom had never traveled alone by ourselves every time it has it was accompanied by my father or some other Somebody. people along with Okay. that was the uh, you know uh, no, no. way it was, that was a norm. yeah that was the norm yeah and uh, so the my grandfather basically said that you're not going i had to go to uh, i remember aurangabad for a tournament okay. and my granddad said just no way of not going and i was too small i didn't understand uh, much of all those things and so my mom was getting worried my uh, you know how, what to do and uh, we have a three floor house in uh, pune so he they would stay on the ground floor we were on the uh, first floor and uh, my uncle on the top floor like that so um, my father he said ki um, you know to an extent where if you think of going don't think of coming back wow. he he said that to my mom wow. and uh, Uh, to an extent my mom was also a bit ambitious but <laughs> uh but i think um that support then my my dad supported me uh, also that time you know he said ki you guys go so we actually sneaked out of the house and uh, why i told you that we stayed on the first floor and uh, the ground floor was my grandparents because my grandfather would uh, at least once or to, you know very rarely twice he would come up uh, to okay. see and uh, yeah he was still working also working we had a uh, you know in our office and everything so uh, in the evenings he would want to see us you know at right. least for a minute at least he he wants to see everybody in the family it's a joint family a so. typical patriarch so that, would like to see whether the flock is yeah. together get to see the grandchildren the works yeah no he just wanted to see you know he was in his uh, he was nearing his 80s and uh, he was a freedom fighter by himself Wow. and uh, he was awarded for that so uh, he was he was uh, he was practical but uh, then um, we sneaked out and uh, uh, we uh, i played and i reached the finals and uh, when i reached the final the heading in the newspaper was that trupti murgunde reaches finals of so and so and the first person to read out uh, the newspaper is my granddad in the house <laughs> and that's it my sister was at home that time and she got left right from him <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but what happened was why i wanted to um, you know tell this story was because um uh, when we say mindset you know it's mm. it's generally that mindset is what matters in every field in every matter correct so what happened after my name started coming in the newspaper all his friends all his uh, business colleagues and every but he started asking murgunde who is she uh, mm. you know what uh, this and then uh, he uh, they were like so nice she's won so and so tournament very nice they started appreciating and right. he he just loved that uh, you know that fame or, or the, the appreciation, appreciation that was coming through for you yeah yeah so he understood that the society is also accepting it's not that the girl child cannot go and right. get into a sport or travel or any of that sort so slowly uh, you know his mindset changed with all Super. that and he started coming to watch my matches wow. after that 
Wow. Yeah. And and, and no so thanks I, to your mom who took that took that uh, mom effort. my dad and of course uh, I will also have to give uh, credit to my uh, you know siblings you know my sister and my brother they they always had to be the bakras. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yes. So uh, yeah it's nice so uh, what I what I feel you know if that t- point of time if my mm. mom would have fumbled or uh was not uh, you know uh, motivating or encouraging uh, me right. my mom or my family entirely my family for that matter Correct. i don't think i would have pursued sports as such at all uh i don't know if i would have continued playing badminton after that or not turning so, uh, point turning point absolutely. of your of your budding career at that time yes absolutely i mean so this is why i wanted to uh, put it across because it's for the uh, parents you know who uh, uh, at times are a little skeptical on sending their children or getting allowing them to get into sports just have uh, a good faith uh, in your own children if they really are passionate or really want to do well in sports just support them that's what they need it super thought there super thought there trupti that's unbelievable and i'm so happy we actually ventured around to talk about this point i am so thrilled yeah. about it yeah. yeah. so and after you. that uh, yeah i mean i will just complete uh, your yeah. question you know the motivation and of course after that i moved to uh, bangalore to you know uh, i was doing well in uh, then there had to be a step right so prakash padukone academy was the only uh, academy then and it's the best place you know right. uh, getting coached uh, from the mentors prakash padukone and vimal kumar also was part of the academy so they've been my coaches uh, throughout and so it was a wonderful so it started uh, as i came to bangalore another new journey with a lot of ups and downs and my international career started uh, uh, post that Correct. so yeah so i think every everyone is uh, involved with my success from from family to the coaches who shaped you so that's the that's been the journey to, to the friends to the friends and also enemies for that matter <laughs> you can say <laughs> because they are the ones who uh, you know ignite you to do uh, uh, bring out the best in you right so you i think i would like competition to, to spur you on yeah. somebody says you can't do yes. it and you say i'll show you <laughs> yeah so it's it's not that every time every time the things happen uh, your way or every time the things go very merrily So right. these ups and downs actually make you perfect uh, sports person or a perfect human being because these That's experiences this sport, are a must. Yeah, sport mirrors life, doesn't it? Because it's got unscripted yeah. drama. It's got the entire yeah. gamut of emotions that you will get with success, with every failure, yeah. and then you stand up after losing as well and say, "I'll fight again another yeah. day," and you fight another battle and you win. Yes. So failure is absolutely important, and uh, as important as the success, I would say that, because. Uh, till you experience the failure you don't know what success is so true yeah so true yeah really and i i'm going to this is running out to be now a spiritual angle i think to... i'm yeah i was just about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just getting raman into my groove <laughs> yeah, so into a different yeah. zone altogether let's get let's get back to music i know you talking about your favorite music and and stuff you like to listen to so so if i were to ask you to pick maybe a couple of tracks what would they be something that you I would heard, love I would I would also love you playing a tapori song I just enjoy that music at times <laughs> what tapori stuff <laughs> yeah you know I, as i said you know dhol tasha and all those kind of uh, <laughs> things so there are there are moods of mine when i really enjoy that sort of a music oh, so super. yeah Yeah, but don't worry. I'm not expecting that song from you. <laughs> I, I'm just a little uh, ill-equipped right now. Let <laughs> me just do this. You, you need to be a little rowdy for that. You know, you can't be very sophisticated with a guitar and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah correct. Oh. Uh, but there's, there's been one song um, which I really liked. You know, I used to listen uh, to her a lot. Her, she, that's uh, Celine Dion, and it's okay. just "Come Alive." and yeah. if you really see the uh, lyrics and the music you know if mm. you really think you know it's it's very peppy it's very peppy yeah. it's very motivating so yeah, i love to, that compared I, to what a lot of people remember celine dion for i mean if i were oh, to say yeah. this since 95% <laughs> of the population will say the titanic song <laughs> Titanic. which is which was super uh, yeah, hit. which was a yeah which yeah, was yeah, a super yeah. hit uh, totally agree totally agree but somehow uh, i never got very fascinated towards that song i felt that was very emotional and I, it would actually My make me very emotional and yeah it was oh, no, super no, no, hit of its time yeah yeah but you like yeah, i'm alive yeah. that's the I'm track alive. that you like yeah, yeah. 
so uh, i feel that is a pretty strong song you know if you really uh, think uh, you need to uh, get that liking for the song as you hear it uh, a few times hmm. you will just get into it it yeah. kind of grows she's on got you a lovely voice yeah she's got and, a lovely and lovely grows uh, on voice you. yes 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 so now that you've said of course celine dion has a lovely voice we're going to get Trupti to sing on this track as well. I'm going to just try and try and provide some backing music to it. <laughs> backing vocals from my side on a Celine Dion track are going to be very risky, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's fine. We'll have a male version of Celine Dion oh, this time. <laughs> when you call for me, when I hear you breathe. I get wings to fly I feel that I'm alive When you look at me I can't touch the sky I know that I'm alive Trupti so, it's been great fun chatting with you this has really been uh, awesome stuff I I really loved it Raman you know I've been doing a lot of interviews in fact uh, pre and post the award also right. and it's been most of the times talking about my achievements and a little more of uh, you know serious stuff but this was such good fun you know I really enjoyed it. and as I said I love music and you've been such a good uh, uh, you have brought it, brought out everything from me directly and indirectly <laughs> so <laughs> I hope no one has any offense on uh, you know the these things but it was a lovely time a lovely uh, uh, you know time afternoon what we had today and uh, thanks for bringing out uh, reminding me of my old favorite number and oh. I'm really good. I'm going to listen to it now every now and then <laughs> super super it's thank a track you, I could you. never play before it's a track I could never play before I learned it because that's the number that you said you like to you like to uh, to listen to yeah i w- i equally wanted to test you so uh, that that's how i ended up giving you I this passed. number <laughs> absolutely absolutely in the time what you had to uh, you know come across with it you have done a fabulous job and i would love to hear the entire song one of the days so i'm going to put you on task and uh, i'm waiting for my goodie bags <laughs> <laughs> they'll be there they, we we'll, we'll exchange that once we meet hopefully once the lockdown yeah. ends and you're back yes. to broadcasting and I'm, I'm back to broadcasting in that way as well yeah yeah all the best for your future endeavors and please take care thank, thank you thank you so much supti many congratulations again for the award and uh, stay safe thank you thanks a lot lovely time thank you <laughs>